If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, very relevant video today. We're gonna react to a scientist from Google sends warning to Muslims from the channel One Path Network. I say very relevant video because needless to mention AI is exploding at the moment and many people are concerned that AI becomes a threat to humanity, let alone religious people, let alone Muslims of course. Guys, before we start the video, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and with no further ado, let's have a look. We have officially entered the AI revolution and in the last yep. year alone, we've seen exactly how powerful AI can be. With viral AI language systems such as ChatGPT being used to write up entire essays, complete school assignments and even prepare Friday khutbah. <laughs> Yeah. There was really a time where you could call ChatGPT Sheikh GPT. That thing was extremely knowledgeable. However, over the past three months or so, I saw a steady decline. Generation software that can create realistic images and videos based on prompts from your wildest imagination. Donald yeah. Trump as a Muslim. Thank you. Thank you very much. Or even create for you a virtual studio. And of course, AI voice models that can be trained to replicate famous voices and mimic whatever sound you envision. Kanye West singing Nasheed. It's very surreal ya to see. Uh, <laughs> and the crazy part is this technology. Is yeah, I just want to say that it's very confusing to my brain to see a traditional Muslim being surrounded by that augmented reality created by AI. It is like two worlds clashing. The crazy part is this technology is making mammoth progressions by the day. But what does this mean for us as Muslims? Yeah. Should we be scared? Is this a sign of an approaching apocalyptic doomsday? Or is this something that will pass over us silently and soon wither away? We sat down no, with one of the world's not. leading Muslim experts. It will definitely not wither away like any technology. It will keep on progressing. It's in AI, Dr. Walid Quddus, no stranger to Silicon Valley, and someone who is responsible for incorporating artificial intelligence into some of the world's biggest brands, such as Google and Uber. Someone who is responsible for pioneering Google Maps. We asked him all the difficult questions, and this is what took place. Is there a transhuman agenda at play, a movement to merge humans and robots together? Yeah, I, I mean... Before we jump to the interview, which I'm sure you're waiting to hear, if you... He might not be the correct person to ask this. However, if you do a little bit of research yourself, it won't take longer than an afternoon. You will find out the people that are invested into the AI revolution are technocrats. Self-admitted technocrats after all. If you look at people such as Ray Kurzweil, they claim that God does not exist. However, they say he's not existing yet. We as humans supposedly are creating God and their God will be an AI. Moreover, they hate humanity as a whole. They believe that our bodies are flawed. They hate all the biological mechanisms such as defecating, going to the toilet, and they want to transcend all of that. Moreover, if you remove God from society, which they have successfully done, then you do not believe in an afterlife and therefore you will seek salvation in this world, in this dunya. And this is truly what we see with those ideologues. Those people force a progressive, liberal, technocratic worldview onto society and they are offering them salvation in the cloud. Throughout our lives, we actually use AI a lot. Uh, so for example, when you finish watching a video on Netflix, how does it decide what you should watch next? Right. The AI has been looking, people who watched movie A always like movie B, or they, you know, 50% of them watch, you know, movie B. And so in so doing, you're actually starting to notice patterns in the world. No longer is the yeah. computer saying, being told exactly what to do but it's being told to adapt and modify. It's revolutionary. And that idea of adaptation is really something that historically has been something that only humans do. And yeah. now all of a sudden computers are becoming stronger as well. Given that That's AI amazing. at the moment can generate realistic images, text, video, and speech, how difficult is it to authenticate information? Is this something that we should be cautious about? Yeah, I, I think it is. And especially what we've seen, for example, in the United States with interference in elections by Russians trying to use these techniques. Imagine those techniques on steroids, right? Because now you can personalize it for every person. 
the, the detectability is, is difficult. So it's something we definitely have to pay attention to and hopefully regulate. How, how do you feel like this will cause, um, you know, in, the, in terms of the spread of information and, and false news and, and things like that, how, how can we combat this? Yeah, it's, it's a really difficult problem. Um, and I think it's also because people have not yet learned you know, to differentiate, you know, between artificial content and, and genuine content. And the content is designed to press people's buttons. And that leads to things like confirmation bias. So really, it's up to us to really check our sources. And it's not like that this is an un-Islamic thing. Mm -hmm. You know, in Surah Al-Hajrat, Allah says, Ya ladina amanu idha ja'akum fasakum binaba'in fatabayanu. So Allah is telling us that when news comes to you, make sure to take the time to verify that. Uh, and, and those forms of verification are getting... The question is, of course, if the lay person will still be able to differentiate what is real and what is not. With improving technology, the deep fakes are getting better over time and pretty fast for that matter. And therefore, the real question becomes, of course, can the regular person distinguish at all? More technically complicated, yeah. but it's the same basic principles. From your experience, how far yeah. is AI from becoming be sentient or tech conscious? Savvy. can be yeah. a boomer. Well, Scientists have struggled to define consciousness for a long time, and I don't think we have a good grip on it. No. Uh, the Quran says, Yes, Aluna Kaina Ruh, Kul Ruh Min Amri Rabbi. They ask you about the soul or the essence of consciousness. They say that knowledge is from the matters of my Lord. In other words, this type of thing is still not something that people can answer. Um, there's also questions about... No, absolutely the not. They have no idea what consciousness is, but they're very confident in telling you that you will be able to upload your consciousness to the cloud, as I previously mentioned. Their utopia is a virtual world where you can leave your dirty old flesh back behind and you can upload your consciousness. But for that, we would have to understand what consciousness is. And if you look at the materialistic worldview, those people will claim, of course, that consciousness is generated by the the brain. They're not identifying consciousness as the soul. They're not identifying consciousness as something that existed previously to your brain. The materialistic worldview is that your brain generates consciousness and therefore if we copy the algorithms of your brain and we upload them, this is you. But how could it be? I'm really not kidding. I saw vegan articles where they claimed that being vegan is not vegan enough. If you are vegan, you're already saving animals and you're saving on carbon emissions. However, your body always produces that bad, bad carbon. And therefore, the best idea would be to get rid of your body altogether and yet again, upload your consciousness. But what does that truly mean? It means they want to kill you. That's pretty much what it is. Your body is the enemy. Biology is the enemy. Get rid of your body. Copy the algorithms of your brain and upload it onto the internet. Sure, that is you, don't you see? Those algorithms in your brain, you're nothing more than that. Till yesterday, the ideology was that you are an evolved monkey. But now that doesn't matter anymore. You're not an evolved monkey anymore. That's just your body and you are just an algorithm. You're not a soul. You're not pure consciousness. No, you're just an algorithm in your brain. And as long as we can copy that algorithm, you will live on forever. And this is the utopia that they're selling to you in the cloud, in the virtual reality, you can be a millionaire, you can have all the women that you want, you can drive the fancy car, all of it without CO2 emissions, you can have the perfect life, watch VR porn all day long, and your body won't restrict you any longer. You can be fat, you can be obese, you don't have to train in the virtual reality, you will always be in shape. This is you, this is the new world. In reality, of course, there is no such thing. In in reality, your body, once it ceases to exist, you are dead and your soul goes elsewhere. That is the reality of things that we as believers know, of course. However, the materialist doesn't believe in that paradigm. He believes that he is his neurons firing. And as long as we can replicate those neurons, he will live on forever. Yeah, sure. The Makes sense. question is well formed. One of the early um, computer science pioneers said, asking if machines can think is like asking if submarines can swim. They're just so different that the question doesn't even make sense. Fair enough. Will yeah. AI replace our friends? Will people stop finding the need to get married and having people and human relationships? Do. Unfortunately, I do foresee a change on that front. Uh, in particular, marriage rates are plummeting across we uh, Western societies. Western societies. Birth rates are plummeting ag yep. against we across Western societies. Yep. And the cause of that essentially is the rise of pornography on the internet. Now, imagine that you take that as an example, and this is only one of the social implications, but imagine that, but 
really amp it up to 11, where you can use AI to craft an identity that is very tailored to your personal preferences and exactly. um, you know what you find interesting, whether that's through text or voice or images. And you can see that same unfortunate pattern of social damage um, that happened with pornography, but much amplified. And that's, I think, something that society will have to deal with. I think it's 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 one of the concerns I do have um, for how AI will adversely affect the community, and unfortunately, we're already starting to see signs of that. Yes, absolutely. This society is about convenience, convenience on steroids, convenience to the max. Back in the day, you used to hunt. Then later on, you cultivated land, you had farm animals, but you still had to butcher, you still had to slaughter, you still had to prepare your own food. Then fast forward, you have the industrialization, and now you have supermarkets everywhere, you have restaurants, but all of this is not convenient enough. Now you're sitting on your couch and you're ordering Uber Eats, and you can choose whatever you want. In big cities, you can choose whatever you like. It could be Chinese, it could be Japanese. You have the whole world of food at your disposal. You can take your phone and just order whatever. Back in the day, you would have to travel to those countries to experience those culinary delights. Nowadays, you do not have to. Back in the day, in order to see a naked woman, you would have to marry her. That was the deal. But nowadays, again, you just take your phone and you can see countless naked women. But that was not enough either. Now you have sites and you have niches and you can choose exactly what you like exactly what arouses you and if that is not enough then you can pay an e-girl and she will do exactly what you want of her for the given amount of money so it's all about convenience it's all about pleasure and about getting exactly what you want at least that's how people perceive it people believe that they want something truly but the question is do they really need it in the quran we read but perhaps Perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows, well, you know not. And that is the great distinction between a religious mind and an atheistic mind. As believers, we truly believe that God knows more than us. We believe in this supreme intelligence that knows, and we certainly cannot truly know what is good for us. We might believe that it's good for us, we might love it even, but that doesn't make it right. How many people love heroin? They love junk food, they love video games, fornication, and what not. Those people love those things and they believe that those things are good for them. Why? Because they feel good. That's the whole argument here in the materialistic worldview. As long as it feels good, it must be right. It feels good. And this is why this quote-unquote freedom given to the people of Western societies is so detrimental. Because those people do not truly know what is good for them. Myself included. I cannot fully know what is good for me. God will decide after all. I always give this analogy. Yes, Daddy Bobby over here. If my son would make his own decisions, he would be doomed. He's two years old. He wants to eat ice cream all day long. If it comes down to him, he will eat just ice cream. Moreover, he wants to watch TV all day long as well. Maybe I should let him decide. He will know what's best for him. Let him watch TV and eat ice cream for the next 10 years. Let's see where he will end up. Don't you see? I know something that he does not know. And that is on a human level. God is so vast, so transcendent, so great great, Allahu Akbar, that he knows what is good for us. And this is why we as Muslims follow the laws of Islam, follow the laws of God prescribed to us. We put our trust in those laws rather than an arbitrary freedom, which can lead us astray. And this is exactly what is happening in the West. Those people follow their freedom, their passions, their desires, and ultimately it leads them astray. They have no families anymore. They're not getting married. They're turning transgender and what not. This happens when you follow your desires. CEO of OpenAI who mm -hmm. created ChatGPT has yeah. said uh, that the technology may pose a risk of extinction. Yeah. As, a, as someone who's experienced in AI and as a Muslim, how yeah. would you respond to that? It, it doesn't keep me awake at night is maybe the best way to put it. If you look at the other causes of extinction, uh, like climate change ah, and just on, society kind this. of falling apart and the family unit kind of being destroyed, which is what we're seeing now. This isn't the thing that gets me, you know, really worried. Uh, the technology is still at its infancy. Um, and Sam Altman has his own agenda. Uh, so I've been in Silicon Valley for 15 years now. 
And what you do is when you have a startup, you want to build a moat around it. You want to build barriers to entry to other people entering it. And so what you do is you get the government to do your dirty work for you, introduce regulations that you know how to meet that other people don't know how to meet. And that's just how business is played. So while I respect Sam Altman's uh, technical abilities, it's also very important to understand that he has an agenda here that he is trying to pursue. And that's just what he's going to do as the CEO of OpenAI. What are some potential uses of AI in the Islamic space that can actually contribute positively? Yeah, Um, I think I've seen some very interesting applications. Um, I think one that really demonstrates the possibilities is Tartil, which is a mobile phone app that listens to you read Quran and tells you when you make a mistake. You know, historically, this has taken... I mean, all of this is nice, but ultimately, you could get an Arabic teacher as well or a Quran teacher. So it's not like we need AI for Islam. As we know, Islam has been perfected once the Quran was revealed. The religion is complete. Therefore, there is no real need for AI. However, yes, I do understand, in this day and age, with so much distraction, those applications can be beneficial. You're sitting down with someone or finding someone to be your buddy. Uh, but this app makes it so much easier. So it's like yeah, a general Yeah, but this is exactly the detrimental effect I hear, because instead of finding a body, instead of finding a real life person, you are making contact with AI yet again, and like that you are disconnecting yourself from the real world. That's it's for almost any purposes. Uh, the apps that can generate images, can generate I- I- artistic images that encourage us to, to kind of really reflect if they are in the right hands with the right prompts. Uh, there are so many exciting possibilities here in terms of just every aspect of Islam. So as an expert in AI, do you trust the information that comes out from these bots and programs? No, I don't. Yeah, uh, I know that may sound counterintuitive to people, no. but I've spent a lot of time working with these bots firsthand. No, it doesn't sound counterintuitive at all. I know a guy that works as a plane engineer and he doesn't trust planes. It's reassuring. I know that they have a problem with what's called hallucination. It's not just that they are ignorant, which means that they don't know, but they hallucinate. They don't know that they don't know. In other words, they can make stuff up, be 100% confident that it's correct. They actually, and call, actually that, completely yeah, they call that jahal murakkab in, in Arabic, when, really? when you don't know that you don't know. Yeah, yeah. so, so yes, the That's big problem with AI is jahal murakkab, right? Yes. Nothing stops it from making up a hadith that doesn't exist, for example. Wow. And the current iterations of the technology have a problem called hallucination. They just make things up. That's hilarious. So uh, there are certain chatbots that if you ask them right now, you know, do I need to wash my w- knees as part of wudu? We'll tell you, yes, you have to wash your knees as part of wudu. And so yeah, that's a good example. I had something similar happening. And then when you keep on pressing the AI and you keep on questioning, it will come up with a different answer. But before that, it was super confident. Yes, it is like that. Sometimes they'll make things up. Crazy. And especially dangerous is they can be very confident that they're uh, and yeah, wrong yeah. at the same time. Same. So they won't tell you, I'm not sure. They will just give you a confident answer. So I think we have to um, kind of be very cautious about using AI in the religious space. Uh, I think there are uses. Um, imagine, you know, right now searching Quran and Hadith is still very difficult um, because often we look for words, but words don't capture meaning. And one of the great things with these AI systems is that they capture meaning or what's called semantic information. Um, And that makes things like Hadith search and Quran search potentially much better. Uh, And that could also be a very awesome tool for scholars, but scholars have the wisdom to interpret and judge that. So in the the past decades, we've seen the problem that we've had with Sheikh Google. Are we gonna have the same problem with Sheikh AI? Yes. I mean, that's the short version of the answer. I think we as a community need to develop our skill to differentiate and understand these technologies well enough to understand their limitations. Uh, I think we think that they are somehow magical and they, they must be talking truth and ignore yeah, you know, people believe 100% that when they Google something, it must be the ultimate truth. This is really how people go about something. They do not go to a sheikh that studied 20, 30 years. No, they just Google it and then they are convinced that they are right. The, the historical biases that have existed um, yeah. in things like search results. And so this has led to kind of all kinds of polarization in society. And I think that there is a risk with these technologies that you could have that same kind of polarization effect if they are not used appropriately. So I think there is definitely the room for that to happen. 
Um, I, I mean, there's always this challenge with the Muslim community. You can either say that what they're doing is wrong or you can adapt to whatever they're doing and make it better. You know, do you say that, no, 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 you should never search the internet for Islamic information, which is one approach. Or do you actually say, well, why don't we work on tools that make it better and more effective exactly. and more authentic exactly. and more consistent yes. to search the internet for answers? And that's really the perspective I would like to take. You would have to take that perspective if you want to survive in this world. This is really how it works. You have to stay adaptable. You always have to adapt to your environment. Otherwise, you're going to get swallowed by the environment. It is like saying, okay, now we are living in nature and we are surrounded by lions. I'm going to be a vegan and I'm going to try to pet those lions. Guess what? My genes will be weeded out of existence. That's just what it is. I'm going to get eaten by a lion. So therefore, if I like it or not, I will have to get smart about my environment i would have to understand how to hunt those lions to protect my food from those lions to protect my family from those lions etc etc you name it depending on the environment if i like it or not i will have to adapt and it's the same of course in those challenging times right now ai is the reality technology is the reality as muslims we are surrounded by it all the time if we want to ignore it we can but we will get swallowed by it best are some of these so AI have to make it I asked ChatGPT when it first came out to explain the Palestinian conflict to a 10-year-old and he gave me some sort of response saying that it's a very complex, difficult thing to sort of explain. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the dangers with very this complicated. particular bias? Yeah. It's too complicated so to explain. Bias is a very real thing, right? Yeah, the, 100%. These man. systems are not kind of They're super politically made correct. mysteriously, right? Like yeah. there are humans who make these systems. Exactly. And there's two things to think about. One is... The, the the piece of software that they write, the algorithms, right? And then the other thing is that the data that they use to build um, the models. The models are the things that do the thinking, if you like. So imagine a programmer is sitting there in California. He has probably a Western liberal bias. He's Thank not you even aware of the bias because that's one of the challenges with bias. Yes. And he's making Correct. choices about how the algorithm... This is very beautifully put. Me growing up in the West, liberalism is just seen as the norm. It is totally normal that you have all the freedoms in the world, quote unquote freedoms yet again, and that you can have, for example, unmarital sex, that you can drink alcohol, that you can eat junk food, etc., etc., you name it. All of that is normal. And then you look at the bad, bad Muslims, they are covering their women. Ooh, how regressive. This is normal. Not normal. So for Westner to realize that he has those biases, he has to deeply self-reflect. We are all ignorant. That is completely normal. We are ignorant on subjects. However, when we pair ignorance and arrogance, this is when it becomes detrimental and destructive. And if you are in a high place in society, for example, you're taking care of the algorithms of AI, then it is so much more important to truly self-reflect and understand those biases. However, all of that being said, conspiracy Bobby over here, I'm not convinced that those biases come from ignorance and arrogance. I, of course, believe that those liberal thought patterns are infused into the AI on purpose. Works. Of course. And the data that they're using to train the algorithm and goes, oh, this is good data, this is bad data. Even if he doesn't mean to introduce bias, bias is going to make its way in. And this is something that has been comprehensively proven um, and especially the, the work of Timnit Gebru, who used to work at Google, and then when she published papers in this area, got fired, um, <laughs> really demonstrates that of this course. bias is a real thing. The good news is there are ways to reduce the bias. Um, so you can either change the data that you use to train the model, or in some cases, you can change the personality of the software that comes and says, please, I want you to adopt an Islamic personality and Islamic mindset. Mm. And in my own I've experience, that that's something GPT. that's actually worked surprisingly well. We've it seen used to. It used to. On. Three months ago, it used to, but it declined, as I said. Nowadays, it really does work, no matter which workaround you want to use for ChatGPT. Our attention spans. Yeah. And given that AI has the ability to write up our assignments and make some of the thinking tasks a lot quicker, yeah. will this make us a lazy or a dumb society? Yes, Ooh, that's absolutely. That's a very, very tricky already question. Did. Every time a new major technology was introduced, people had concerns mm -hmm. that it was going to cause the destruction of humanity. 
Yeah, but it did. <laughs> That's the whole point. Because yes, I am aware they said the same thing about the television and look at us now. Yeah, look at us now. Look at our society, how dumbed down it is. And what have we reached now? First television, Hollywood movies, then you had series, which was a shorter format, then YouTube videos. And now ultimately we end up at TikTok. So if you don't see a steady decline in humanity, I don't know what you see. So even when Honestly. published books, when printing presses came out, people were like, this is going to damage people's memory and it's going to make everything worse and no one will remember yeah, anything. Yeah, which it did. But now we see that, that, that... But that's absolutely correct because back in the day, my grandfather, for example, he knew so many stories, man. He could tell me so many beautiful stories from the past or fictional stories, jokes. He had so much memory. I do not remember anything. And, that impact and the same applies to everybody I know. Having Nobody can remember that, you anything. You have to ask the question, People has watch this memes. gone too far? Are we now living in such a society of, uh, of ease that... It yeah. affects our value judgments, right? So when knowledge was hard to obtain and when it was hard to learn about Islamic knowledge, we seem to have respected it more. They used to travel for months yeah. to get one hadith. Exactly. exactly. And now we live in an age where you can get every hadith in 10 seconds. Every hadith ever written, ever, ever, ever documented in 10 seconds. But it hasn't really made us like better Muslims, right? Exactly. Because there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. And yes. that's my concern with this technology as well. Sometimes when you make things easier like and more accessible, you devalue them in the process. And that's really my fear. Yes, Is there exactly. And like this, humans have been devalued as well. He mentioned pornography, for example. Back in the day, I'm repeating myself, you had to marry a woman. And there was a huge value attached to that marriage, to that woman. She becomes your wife. She becomes the mother of your children. There is a huge value in place here. But nowadays, people can watch as many naked women as they want on their smartphones. This devalues humans. Don't you understand? Is there a transhuman agenda at play, you know, a movement to merge humans and robots together we had that yeah uh, i mean there are people who have that view within the community and talk a lot about things like the singularity yeah that is records will we'll come the together and there'll be a new species yes. homo roboticus or something like that mm. we're not really seeing things go in that direction um and are we not you know there's always going to be people on the margins who have crazy ideas mm. But I don't think this is something that... But how are we not? If you look back into the recent past, the recent few years, most people took a certain medication. A medication, a technology that is potentially altering their DNA. By that, they already changed what it means to be human. There's so many medical inventions lately that people do to themselves that are changing what it means to be a human. In the fitness space, for example, you have hormone replacement therapy. Men in their 50s having testosterone levels of 20-year-olds. So that technologically changes what it means to be a human. Such a human couldn't have existed 50, 60 years ago. And moreover, the transhumanists claim as well that this phone here is an extension of ourself. And you would agree here as well, of course. If I do not know something, I look to my phone. Now those phones became watches. Now some people use goggles. And meanwhile, an Elon Musk is working on the neural link, which is a chip that is supposed to be implanted into your brain. So then you have all of the information directly in your brain you don't have to look at your phone anymore oh what a chore even more convenience so the point of the story is that people nowadays are already a being that technically wouldn't be definable as a human being 20 30 40 50 years ago so therefore we are already transhuman seen like a and now we just have conspiracy to happening in silicon keep on pushing that idea you know further and further, and further. And together uh, could the advancements of artificial intelligence possibly cast a doubt on the awe-inspiring nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation? Not, not for me, certainly not. Um, if anything, it's the opposite. And, you know, all of these machines, all of these, you know, crazy algorithms, we still can't, you know, there's a verse in the Quran that talks about humanity creating a fly. We haven't even managed to create a fly. Right. So, I mean, the thought that this is going to somehow affect our iman because we've kind of glued together lots of information on the internet and made like a little, you know, they call them stochastic parrots, random parrots. You know, like think of these things as like lots of mon monkeys that have been trained on the internet, as if that reflects something and a change in our faith. That was, that seems preposterous to me. Given that AI has the capability of replicating human voice, matching visuals, or even bringing back to virtual life someone who's passed away, 
is AI playing the role of virtual God? life? You, you'll notice that there's something common to all of these patterns, which is all of these algorithms, they need something to get them started. So even if you want to create someone who's alive after they were dead, you need like every email they've ever sent or every phone call that they've ever made. All these things are doing is just replicating things exactly. that Allah had. Um, yes. I remember Muhammad Sharif used to tell the story of, you know, scientists who said, you know what, we can now create like a tiny little insect and they have a discussion with God and, and God says, well, then go get your own dirt and elements that you use to make the insect. Yes. All this is doing is clever reassembly. Mm. Uh, if anything, it just lets us wonder about like, how Allah did this in the first place. Even scientifically speaking, energy is never lost. And therefore, as he says, it is clever reassembling. No matter what you do on a chemical level, you take molecules or on a greater level, you take certain building blocks, be it wood, be it oil, be it iron. This brings me back to my daddy example yet again. It is as if I'm giving building blocks to my son and he's building a little castle with it. And then after that, he's of course going to present it proudly and say, I built that castle. But ultimately, I gave him the building blocks. <laughs> How can a Muslim ensure that AI does not ruin their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, that's a very, very deep question. I would say read um, the Quran. It definitely has the potential in to. In book format. You could use AIs to educate you about Islam. You could use it to build really great da'wah material, but you can also use it to build machines that kill people, machines that do other disastrous things, that spam people and cause facade in the land and so on. So it's really up to us to use the benefits of AI to help us grow better. And, you know, in much the same way that uh, having access to books is neither good nor bad, it just really depends on like your focus and your choice. You can make choices in how you use AI, for example, to summarize Islamic books. Um, you can use it for your spiritual development just as much, and it can benefit in that way too. You've worked on developments such as Google Maps and Uber, both of which are technologies that have changed people's lives. Mm. Where do you see AI, you know, taking humanity forward within the five to next five to 10 years? Yeah, wow, that's a really, really tricky question. All of these technologies, what they're going to do is amplify the trends that exist already in society. And the evil will become worse and the good will become better. And it's really up to us to make sure that that will, that will go in the positive direction. I foresee a world where education and learning about the world is going to be much accelerated. I can see a world where people feel more productive and fulfilled at work because of the menial tasks that their work uh, involves have been automated. But I can also see a world of... It is essentially power that is so divisive and brings out the best and the worst of people. So ultimately, we can say that this is truly a good thing because like this, we can see who the true believers are. More unemployment and more inequity in society where the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. And that's where that's we as Muslims anyways. have to be part of this discussion to ensure that the right things happen in society, uh, that uh, society moves in the direction of positivity, of utility for the community as a whole. And do you think Muslims should embrace AI or should they stand and wait back and find out what happens? The, the lessons of history and Islam to me are that it's been a bad idea for us to stay back and really, yes. really want people at the forefront Absolutely. of these skills. So I think about, you know, when the printing press was introduced, originally, many scholars opposed the printing press because it was, um, it was seen as, uh, destructive to knowledge and, and putting these hands on people. The same thing, if you remember back to the internet or satellite television, Muslims were originally opposed only to later, uh, embrace these technologies and, they have to and start up. to use them. Yep and miss out on the benefit of all those years when they said that they were not really very useful. So I think if we have people who have the right mentality, who can take the time to understand this technology, we have the opportunity here to direct this technology in a way that we think um, could bring about more social good and less yes, social harm. It's out there. You have um, to. And I, I don't think we can stick our heads in the sands. If we don't have Islamic alternatives for people, people are just going to go use ChatGPT or whatever else. Yep. So it's really important for us to be part of this narrative from the beginning. And that's become a driving factor for me personally, investing in this space, because it is going to be an agent of social change. And I'd rather have it play out for us than against us. 
Alright, that's it for today's video. Long enough as it is, so I'm gonna cut it off here. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, via merch, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.